from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Bill seeking to address property taxes for Montanans. Uh, the response from local leaders coming up at 633. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. TikTok isn't just for young people anymore. Millions of Americans are using the social media site every day. But should it be banned? We look at the latest push and whether a ban will actually happen next. All right, a little bit after 6.30 on this Monday after the Super Bowl. Chet Lehman, Jay McDonald, Matt Elwell with you. Good morning. It's Good Monday. Morning. We made hey, it hello. Right through the weekend. Many of you will not be going to work today uh, because guess. it is well, Monday after the I've Super Bowl. I've heard the flu's yeah. going around, Chet. Yeah, yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, 24 yeah. 24-hour yeah. version. Yeah, 24-hour. <laughs> uh, and tomorrow's going to be a different oh, kind terrible, of trouble. Yeah. So uh, we're watching this next system move in. Early morning temperatures into the teens. It is sub-zero out toward West Yellowstone. By below right now, our current temperature. I think as you get into the early evening, we start to see some of that snow develop west of the divide and work its way eastward as we head into the evening. Temperatures, uh, you'll be quite uh, pleased if you're spending time outdoors this afternoon. Highs near 40. Wind is picking up as we get into the mid-afternoon and later. In fact, we'll see some gusty winds and heavy snow as you get into the evening. I'm going to talk more about how this is going to impact your drive tomorrow morning and tonight. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. Well, our top story this half hour, property taxes are a big concern for many Montanans, but they're largely determined at the local level, not the state level. Now, a bill being proposed that seeks to address the growth in local taxes by putting limits on how much cities and counties are allowed to spend. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan M. Berrien explains the proposal. On Thursday, a Montana Legislative Committee heard testimony on a bill that would establish a cap for just how much large cities and counties in Montana can increase their total spending year to year. The House Local Government Committee held a hearing on House Bill 324. Starting in 2026, it would limit affected counties and cities to raising their expenditures from all sources in accordance with inflation and population growth, except in a declared emergency or when voters approve the increase. Representative Caleb Hinkle, a Republican from Belgrade, said it was designed after a statewide provision in Colorado. He said addressing spending would be the best way to tackle increasing property taxes. Jesse Ramos, a former Missoula City Council member now representing the group Americans for Prosperity, said it would lead to more transparency for residents. So that if cities are doing a good job, they don't even know we passed the bill. And if cities that are doing, quote unquote, a bad job by just spending too much and taxing their citizens out of their homes and making it unaffordable for folks to live there, they just have to ask the voters that I'm not saying they can't do it. This bill doesn't say they can't do it. The sponsor isn't saying they can't do it. They're just saying just be transparent. Local government representatives spoke in opposition to the bill, saying it didn't take into account the technical impacts it would have on cities and counties and that they can't simply treat funds from all sources as the same. I would be happy to sit down with them and identify ways that in Montana, we have plot processes in place that you could come up with a theory to cap year over year, both revenues and expenditures, but you can't take a Colorado bill and slap it in Montana and make it work. And that's what this bill does. The committee took no immediate action on the bill. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Now, 636, tensions between the U.S. and China remain high, following a Chinese surveillance balloon being spotted over the U.S. skies earlier this month. This week, more members of Congress are expected to be briefed on that incident, as well as the state of the U.S.-China relations. That's an issue that includes TikTok, mm -hmm. with the CEO of TikTok set to go before Congress in March. Mm -hmm. Our Joe St. George now with a look at the likelihood that tense Chinese relations could result in a TikTok ban. Walk down any street and you'll see it. People on their phones. But what exactly is being viewed? Definitely Instagram and TikTok. TikTok is like really fast media. TikTok. We'll do TikTok. No surprise here. TikTok came up a lot during our informal poll. Around 90 million Americans use it. I'm obsessed with my phone. I think TikTok is super easy to get obsessed with. But should this social media site be banned in the United States? You may recall former President Trump signed an executive order back in 2020 to make that happen unless certain things took place. A federal judge ultimately blocked that order and President Biden rescinded Mr. Trump's order when he took office. But the idea to ban it hasn't gone away, especially in Washington. Should the U.S. ban TikTok? Absolutely. That was Republican Senator Rick Scott of Florida during an interview with Scripps News. In early February, Democratic Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado called for app stores to block it. 
At least 26 states already banned TikTok use on state-owned phones. What's the concern with TikTok? In short, it's China. TikTok is owned by the Chinese company ByteDance. In 2021, a firm connected with the Chinese government obtained a small stake in the company. In Washington, that relationship has been met with concern over fear sensitive data might be shared, something TikTok denies. Will a nationwide ban take place? Well, the answer is unclear. While tensions remain high with China following the recent surveillance balloon controversy, and while some on Capitol Hill want to disengage from China further, all eyes right now are on the White House to see what a little known government panel known as the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States decides. That group has been negotiating with TikTok for months. TikTok is not the Chinese Communist Party. It's a private company. But Professor Milton Mueller, who has studied internet policy at Georgia Tech for decades, says banning it has consequences. Other countries may be inspired to impose similar social media bans in the name of national security. The professor also believes a ban would violate the First Amendment. Banning it is a, an incredible intervention in, in their right to freedom of expression. And I think you're going to see some kind of an agreement between TikTok and the U.S government. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. I don't have TikTok, but it's not no, because of I all that either. controversy. It's right. just I, I can't manage another thing. No, I'm just, I can't. I'm just old and I got not, enough on I my got phone. too much to do. <laughs> the I can't notifications do it. are off the hook. nothing to do with the rest of it. I just don't no. have time. I just, I can't. I can't talk. I can't <laughs> no, do it. it's not happening. <laughs> no, well, in kind of similar news, last week, the Chinese surveillance balloon that was seen over Montana and eventually shot down over the East Coast emphasized the importance of national security and the role of the Air Force Base. That's right. On Wednesday, MTN's Tim McGonigal was able to get a first-hand look at the role and the mission, the newest branch of the U.S. military, the U.S. Space Force. The recent Chinese surveillance balloon that was seen over Montana and eventually shot down over the East Coast emphasized the importance of national security and the role of Malmstrom Air Force Base. On Wednesday, base leaders and other personnel got a first-hand look at the role and mission of the newest branch of the U.S. military, the U.S. Space Force, as well as the U.S. Space Force Association. Now, there's been champions on the Hill. Retired Air Force Colonel Bill Wolf is back where his military career began. He started as a missileer at Malmstrom in 1995. Almost 30 years later, he's spreading the word about a new branch of service. The mission of the Space Force Association is to inform, educate, and advocate for the U.S. Space Force guardians and their families and to ensure the U.S. Space Force has the capabilities it needs to execute its space superiority mission. Malmstrom is home to a Space Force squadron, Detachment 1 of 22 Space Operations Squadron. With about 17 members, they're serving a classified cyber mission. The Space Force is really dedicated on the technology in orbit through satellites to ensure that our terrestrial domains have the capabilities they need, uh, the terrestrial domains of the other services, such as the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army, have what they need to do their job. The nonprofit SFA was established near the end of 2019, just a few months before the Space Force became a service. Wolf welcomes the challenge of getting the word out about the Space Force. Space Force only has a few bases and, by design, a limited organizational structure. In total, there are about 18,000 service members or guardians and civilians in the Space Force. There aren't a lot of people, men and women, walking around in uniform with Space Force on their uniform. And so a lot of people don't even recognize or understand uh, that the Space Force is a service in the Department of Defense. Wolf, who now makes his home in the Wolf Creek area, says the incident with a Chinese surveillance balloon recently over U.S. airspace is a good example of why Space Force is needed. What that kind of lends to is the fact that we don't have good surveillance techniques uh, for the air domain. Now let's extend those surveillance capabilities that we have uh, in the air domain and extend that out into the space domain. So if the Chinese are doing that with balloons currently, over sovereign airspace, what is happening in the space domain today? And that's a critical aspect of the Space Force and what they're thinking about every single day. Membership in the Space Force Association isn't just limited to guardians. For $35 a year, Wolf says anyone with an interest in space or supporting the military can make a big difference. And so we're always looking for volunteers to help out with the numerous programs that we have set up that start from the Space Force Cadet Corps uh, through the SFA Creator League, which is helping to create coders uh, and, uh, on gaming platforms. Um, to our Global Space University. At Malmstrom Air Force Base, Tim McGonigal, MTN News.
Interesting. Uh, very, very much so. <laughs> All right, 642, we're going to take a short break. We'll have more of your top headlines coming your way. And Valentine's Day is quickly approaching. It's tomorrow. So in case you don't want to waste your money, we'll have that story.